Hey there. Last week, I ran into a situation that I hadn't before in Workado where the JSON response that I got had periods in the keys. And apparently, Workado doesn't like this. So I wanted to make this video in case you encounter this too to show you how to solve it. So to give you some background, um, I was using the HTTP, uh, HTTP connector. And again, the response that from that um, connector was uh, had, had periods in the name. So instead of having uh, nested JSON, um, and let me actually show you, it'll make a little bit more sense um, when we come down here. So we'll see that instead of having like a, a nested JSON where the user ID is under uh, user, it just is user dot user ID and user dot expiration. So instead of just being able to grab the user ID and expiration, uh, they separate it by a period. And again, Workado uh, doesn't like this. It'll give you a warning, but it actually won't stop a recipe from running. So let me show you what I mean. So uh, for right now, I'm just skipping through steps four and seven. Um, I'll take you through those in a little bit. So right now, I'm just getting uh, getting the reports via HTTP, and I want to add those to um, my keys lookup table here. I'm just going to get status and register date. So I will add in... Uh, the rows source list. And then from that, I just want to get, um, where is it? Core status and uh, register date. So we'll see, uh, it'll give you a warning to please replace invalid data pills. Um, and normally when you get a, a warning like this, it's actually gonna stop the recipe from running, but that's not the case here. It will run and it will actually add empty rows to the lookup table here. So let me uh, back out of here. I'm just going to rerun this job. And I'll refresh this. And we'll see here now um, there is 10 rows. So if I go back here and I need to refresh this. Oh. <laughs> Let me go back one. We'll see that the count is 10 and there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rows, uh, but there's nothing uh, in those rows. And so uh, that's not great. Um, and I'll also show you that the same thing happens uh, and this time I'm going to skip the, the, the batch upload and I'm going to do a, a for each on this. So I'll unskip this. And I'm still going to skip this step because you know, that's going to be a future thing. So same thing I'm doing here. So I'm using the the, um, the core status in the for each and also the, this should be date register. And again, I'm using, getting those same date uh, warnings. So let me come back. I'm going to repeat this job again. And again, we can see uh, 10 empty rows. But what we can do is we can hard code the values and it does work. So let me come back here. I'm going to edit my recipe again. And this time I'm going to skip the step that's using the invalid ones. And I'm going to unskip this step. So here I'm using the a formula. So I'm using a formula here and I'm taking the, the step five output and then I'm just hard coding um, that course.status and the user.register date uh, um, keys and this time it will work. So let me just show you that So now we can see that we're actually getting the values here of published and um, all of those dates but I don't want to do that for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's just more difficult than it needs to be. And more importantly, is I do want to take advantage of being able to use the, the batch um, add entries. And you can't hard code that in the batch. I've tried. Uh, it doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip this for each again. So we're just going to be, I'm just going to want to use this um, add entries to the lookup table uh, in batch. So in order to do this, we need to use the JSON parser tool. So I'm going to unskip this step. And here, um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm replacing uh, any of the, um, the periods in the JSON with just um, like 
empty empty space. It's not even a space. So um, instead of it being user dot user ID, it's just user user ID all one word. Same thing for user expiration. So this is really uh, mimicking the the JSON response that we're getting. Aside from I'm just stripping out all of the periods. Now. Coming down to our document, we're using the formula mode again. I'm taking the response from step three and we're just using a formula here. So we're changing it to a string. We're substituting that period just for uh, nothing, uh, which will make it all one, uh, one word essentially. And then we're also just doing some other things here to clean up um, in case it'd be any uh, things that are saying no, we're just gonna change that to no. And now in step 10, we're going to, instead of using uh, step three here, we're going to use the JSON step. So again, we're going to get our rows from the JSON document and then the, the status and the uh, user register date. And now when we run it, we can see that now we have all of our data. So um, I hope this is useful. Also, you know, maybe not even just having periods in the keys, but anything where the keys aren't uh, what you're expecting, you can always use that JSON parser. So I hope this helps you.